What an afternoon at the Algarve International Circuit, getting underway in the middle portion of the sunshine. Great conditions. And from pole position, Manuel Maldonado had a really good getaway, although he was under pressure partway round this opening lap from no fewer than a, two or three cars. However, in his wake, this happened, a spin for Ollie Gray, and then he would get walloped by Charlie Samani's Ferrari, who had no alternative, really, but to strike the nose of the Ollie Gray car. That was after a, uh, some contact from Carl Bennett. Speaking of a touch, the 28 car, long-time leader in the opening 45 minutes of Nico Pino, uh, clashing with the GR Racing Ferrari, and that would put the number 28 car into the gravel and significant delay. We got on the way again, but this uh, race has been littered with virtual safety car, proper safety car, and the odd full course yellow as well. Cars going in every single direction possible. That was totally a lose, though, for Scott Noble on his own. The Iron Danes Porsche was close, but certainly about half a car length off the back of the JMW Motorsport Ferrari. Neat little overtake as well for the 65 crew. They thought, but then a squirm on the exit of Turn 1 meant that the places were reversed. And all day, in LMP2 <coughs> Pro-Am, the 29 and the 83 car have been coming to blows, not least in this moment, as Matthias Besch went for the inside of the uh, LMP3 car and forced his way through. Then a frightening moment, not least, for Oli Jarvis in the number 21 LMP2 car, hitting the side of Derek De Boer, who realised straight away he would need to head into pit road, but almost cleaned out the Nielsen racing car in the process. Thankfully, that very high speed uh, collision was avoided. Into turn eight, great dicing again between the 65 car that has been uh, certainly in the thick of the action throughout the course of the day, regardless of which driver has been at the wheel. Maldonado, Milesi, Artur Leclerc, but then he couldn't get out of one of the full course yellows. For some reason, the speed limiter would not release, and then, in a vain hope to get some of those places back again, colliding with the Vector Sport car not once but twice. WTM versus Euro International had a really good dice as well, but they also needed to factor in Gael Julien in the number 15 RLRM Sport car, working his way through the order. Once he took over, the overtaking would commence in anger. Iron Dames got to the lead of the race, and for a long time, Michel Gatting was able to fend off the advances of Andrea Caldarelli. Meanwhile, in LMP3, this rather put pay to any championship opportunities for the number eight team Virage car. Again, 83 AF Corsa and the 29 Richard Mille racing car found one another on the track and were inches away from each other. It's been terrific to watch, but eventually the 29 crew were given a penalty for track limits and that would take the Matthias Besch driven car out of the equation. This pass at the final corner, just before the race leader went through to take the race, lead, race uh, win, is the real crucial one because Lamborghini then ahead of Porsche, which meant that the Iron Lynx crew number 63 outscored the 57 Ferrari of Kessel, who couldn't get any higher than fifth position. So they miss out by a handful of points and Iron Lynx grabbed the trophy. The win in overall goes to Cool Racing, but the championship to the second place car for AO by TF. And a late change in LMP2 saw the championship win swing back in the direction of AF Corsa, number 83. Where on earth has this script come from? And let's get plenty more of it next year.